Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to English Football Club Barcelona, your Barcelona's channel in English. Well, uh, today we have some, we're going to talk about the match of yesterday and also we're going to talk about the latest news of the club. But before I start it, let me remind you if you like Barcelona and you don't want to miss the latest news of the team of your dreams, this is your channel down there. There is a red button that you can hit the subscribe and like this you will be on date of the latest news of the best team in the world. And without more delay, let's start. Well, as I told you yesterday, we had that match against Juventus, that friendly match. Uh, friendly, friendly, it was not that friendly. Some actions and sometimes it seemed that there, they were trying to, to really fight if there was something in play. But and at the end, there was nothing. It was just a normal match for a friendly match to, to see how the teams are evolving. You know? For Barcelona, the starting eleven was a bit weird. Ter Stegen was on the goal for fourth time this this year, so Xavi is giving clear signs of who's going to be the goalkeeper. But at the end, uh, the second half, uh, Iñaki Peña was the goalkeeper. Then we had Sergio Roberto at the right, Eric Garcia and Christensen at the center of the cent of the defense, and Jordi Alba at the left. Sergio Roberto that played just thirty minutes. For one moment, I considered that it was just because Sergio Roberto was doing a really bad match, and he he left a lot of his space behind. Uh, it's it's probably not he, he he. I don't think he can adapt to that place. He couldn't before. I don't think he can do it even now, even with Xavi. And the the problem is not with with uh, Sergio Roberto. Uh, we, we could imagine, you know, with Sergio Roberto, we have that problem. But the problem is that with this, we had the same mistakes. A lot of space behind. Uh, it's true that. Uh, Des try to be a bit of more offensive, but well, uh, that door was all the time open, and actually Barcelona's goal, Barcelona received the goals from that play. So important to cover that. No? Then we had Busquets as a pivot, and then Nico and Casier. That was a really very weird uh, Nico and Casier. I don't think they under really understood each other. Uh, Casier, brilliant yesterday better than Nico, that Nico seemed not to be that that comfortable in that position. And finally, the three the, the three players at the forward were Dembele, Aubameyang at the left, and Lewandowski. Lewandowski as a striker. No? As you can see, well, uh, a Dortmund offensive team. But, well, at the end, uh, in my opinion, Aubameyang was more disappeared than anything. He had, I think, just one option, one one chance. But the rest of the half, the first half, he disappeared completely. Lewandowski tried. Uh, there, he had some chances to score a goal, but at the end, nothing. And Dembele was the most dangerous. And actually, for me, if you ask me about that, the man of the match clearly was Dembele. Dembele invites us to keep dreaming. Uh, he was on the bench for two times at the starting 11. He, he then played from the beginning of the matches and then Xavi gave him just really a chance and he didn't th threw it away. So a wonderful match from Dembele who in 20 minutes scored um, two wonderful goals. And actually it was about to, to text Something like uh, it seems that Dembele cannot score a goal to the to the rainbow, but thankfully <laughs> he scored two wonderful goals. Uh, sadly, because as I'm, as I'm saying, uh, the prime was at the at the back, not that right back that we are still suffering from there. Also, another well, also other players that I could. But there were other things I really like. For example, Sergio Roberto played just 30 minutes. But this was not completely a fault of the club. This was the organization of the match. Later, in the second half, they put Sergio Roberto to play again. And I was like, that's impossible. 
Uh, and then they wrote, <laughs> instead of Gabi, they gave a new a new player. It's called Gaviria. I don't know who he is, but he was playing with Gabi's number. <laughs> so well, it was a funny joke at the end, but I was like, who the hell is that person? Anyway, um, Rafinha also wonderful. He Every time he, he touched the ball, it was dangerous. Then, uh, uh, actually, Rafinha and uh, Ansu Fati in just... 12 seconds, if I'm not wrong, hit the same crossbar, the same part of the crossbar, in the same play, everything the same. So really, really dangerous Barcelona. Just very sadly, in the second half, we didn't materialize anything. And another player who was playing in Busquets' position, in this case, it was Pjanic. Actually, it, without reading what Xavi said after the match, I really like it how Pjanic played yesterday. He controlled the ball. He gave his he he gave his speed to the play. He found all the time the man who was uh, alone, uh, trying to go vertically and not being so horizontal, horizontal playing. So yesterday I really like it how he how Pjanic played. And actually all the media are saying that maybe the the player who Barcelona is looking for is Pjanic. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, we need a pivot. It's true, but we need a young pivot. And um, Pjanic is 31, so uh, or 32. I'm not really sure. But we are not talking exactly a very, very young player. And if we change Pjanic for Busquets, at the end we have a player for two years. And what we need is a player for 10 years, for example, are out. You know? So, well, for a solution, a short-term solution. Yeah, why not? Let's see how he performs the, the next match against America. But uh, I, I, I'm not really, really sure. But oh, I think he did a great match yesterday. And who knows? And finally, Barcelona and Sevilla, as yesterday, the media were talking about or saying they reached an agreement. It seems that Barcelona will pay the 50 or 60 million euros that. I guess 50 is not, I don't think it's going to reach those 60. And it seems it's more because Chelsea didn't reinforce his agreement with Sevilla. I'm not sure if it's because Kunde didn't agree with the conditions, a lot of money in this case, that's true, 10 million euros they offered him for, as a net salary. So that's a lot of million for a player. And he's going to go get less in Barcelona for sure. I mean, they are saying to Frankie Dion to get less. And Frankie Dion is one of the top in Europe. So imagine, well, because he, uh, sorry, Kunde too, anyway. But uh, another reinforcement for our defense. I, I'm really happy because uh, Kunde, I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Pique, I don't think he's in his best. Mm condition right now uh, if we have if we want to fight for something we need at least four defenders um, <clears throat> in this moment we have Araujo, Christensen, Eric Garcia and Eric Garcia I can put it in quotes because I'm not sure if he's in the best level and then we need one more and this one is Kunde. Of course, Barcelona were considering other options if Kunde didn't work. But at the end, it seems that it worked. But as I'm saying at the, at the beginning of the match, the problem is not Kunde or the defense, the, the center back, because they still were Christensen and Eric Garcia were playing quite good. The problem is the right and left back. Left, no, because Jordi Alba weirdly makes mistakes, but Dest and and Marcos Alonso, in my opinion, uh, sorry, Marcos Alonso, Sergio Roberto, mm, it seems that they don't finish to understand what they have to do. And I'm talking about this, because I, I, I'm pointing more to this because Sergio Roberto at the end is a midfielder. But this last year, when Alves was in the club, Alves was the first get in the position. A player with 38 years or over, a player of 21 or 19, I'm not sure how old Dest is, but it's really to accept, it's it's really hard to accept something like that. Like, and it's true that it's more experience, but they should have tried to learn some things from, from Alves and Etienne. 
And well, that's where Barcelona now is going to try to sign Aspiliqueta and Marcos Alonso. But there is a problem. Chelsea is not really happy with what's going on with Barcelona. Chelsea wanted Rafinha. Barcelona got Rafinha. Chelsea wanted Koundé. Barcelona got Koundé. Many players... Uh, actually, Christensen didn't renew with Chelsea to go to Barcelona. So... Something tells me that this is going to turn very, very difficult from when it, it was very easy because actually Aspilicueta and Marcos Alonso want to leave Chelsea to finish their years in Barcelona, which I consider is a very logic option or very logic thing considering that they are from Spain. But it seems that with the recent events, it's going to be very difficult to get them. We will see. But the main problem now is how to sign the players. Because we cannot sign in La Liga all the players we've signed in this moment. It's true that they came with lower salaries, but we have salaries that are pretty high. And actually, it's not just the salaries, it's the players we have. We have an overbooking of players. If I'm not sure, if I'm not wrong, probably we have like 33 or 34 players when we really need just 25, 26 as maximum. So in this moment, Barcelona is trying to send players, Frankie de Jong, Depay, but these are not the only options. Uh, Tebas, yesterday, the president of La Liga, talked about this situation. He said that Barcelona knows what to, they have to do. They are working good. Something surprised me, to be honest. But well, I'm really, I have, I'm really skeptic about this, and I wouldn't be surprised if the first match against uh, of La Liga against Real Sociedad on August 13th, if I'm not wrong, we don't see some of the players playing because they couldn't sign them. Anyway, we still have whole month to, to solve this situation, but we will see. At the moment, it seems that Neto is going to be go to Napoli. We will see the rest. Anyway, whatever is the future, you know, you will be able to know it here in Football Club Barcelona. No, in English, Football Club Barcelona. We are not, <laughs> we are not official on the club. Anyway, thank you for watching us and see you in the next video. Have a nice day.